Hey guys, this is Danger Zone, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be going uh, going through how to personalize your Track IR settings, specifically this Advanced Settings tab, uh, to get the Track IR to uh, to be a little more functional for you, uh, specifically in this IL-2 Sturmovic uh, Battle of Stalingrad. So, uh, to give you a little background, I've recently gotten more into flying simulators. And in doing so, I was watching a bunch of videos online. Specifically here, I found uh, the Ape of the Year. He's on YouTube and he's got a ton of videos, as you can see. Uh, I've seen quite a few of them. You see all these watched here. Um, and I actually talked to him online. He was very responsive and sent me a link to his My Track IR Settings video, which was uh, pretty helpful. Uh, I'm creating a video for this just to uh, get a little more detailed on explaining how this graph works so that it's a little easier for you guys, but I definitely suggest watching his first. It's a, it's a good base. And then also watching a, a lot of the videos that he has on his channel. He's got a lot of good dogfighting and, uh, and you know covers a lot of ground when it comes to the different planes on, on Battle of Stalingrad and, and just uh, energy fighting and, and all the details. So make sure to check him out. So, first things first, uh, how do you understand this advanced settings tab uh, and, and really adjust these, these points to, to get a feel for uh, in, in the game what, you're, what you want your head to be able to do and, and, and really see around your plane. So I'm going to show you a few different settings and then I'm going to join a game and, and show you how each one of these changes uh, affects what your head does. But um, but to explain this a little better, I'm gonna I'm gonna start here. This is this is the profile tab, um, and it starts on default. So when you first install Track IR, uh, it's gonna default to the default. But to better understand what goes on, we're gonna look at one to one real quick. What one to one is showing is that basically as you turn your head. Um, in in any direction, you're moving. Um, one to one. So for every one degree you move left or right or up or down or rotate your head side to side, you're going to change that exact amount. So if you, you know, are theoretically in a plane, uh, like in a simulator, you're using the track IR. If you want to look behind you, you actually have to turn your head all the way around, which is pretty difficult. And there's no real reason you would want that on a track IR. Um, you know, because the whole point of a track IR is to look at a monitor and be able to see around your plane. This one-to-one -one setting is similar to what you would have in an Oculus Rift or a virtual reality setting so that you could actually turn your head and get a feel for being um, being actually there. But it's not really going to work for us using a monitor. So uh, let's go back to default and take a look at what it's doing. So basically what this is doing is um, it's saying that it, now that you're you're off of one, you're up into the six range here. That uh, once you get to 15 degree turn, for example, in this case we're looking at the yaw. So yaw, when you get to 15 degree turn in either direction. So here I've turned my head 15 degrees. Uh, it's showing me that I've actually moved here 50 degrees, and then um, for every further degree, I will move six degrees in that direction. That's what this is saying. So basically. As you are turning your head, this is the rate at which it will continue to turn. Uh, please note that here it starts at zero. So it's got uh, the, the, the default settings, basically, when you are looking directly to where you sync the camera, um, it's not going to move very fast. So here, as you can see, I'm moving my head very steadily. And as I do that, in the same rate up and down, it comes to zero, it kind of locks on zero, and then it continues to move. Same as in the yaw setting, it does that, it kind of locks on zero, and goes back. Now I'm turning my head at the same rate, I'm not slowing down when it gets to zero. It's doing that slowing down on its own. And that's based on these parameters that you input here. So. Uh, what I wanted to do when I sent my profile for uh, Battle of Stalingrad is to have a similar to one-to-one -to -one feel here in the sense that um, basically as I move my head around 
it tracks uh, a fluid movement instead of getting caught in the center all the time actually have a fluid movement so what I did was I increased these numbers uh, up a little higher so that I could still turn my head all the way around while still being able to see my monitor I'll show you that now so if I go to my Battle of Stalingrad here in, in the yaw um, I, I created it uh, almost flat here so instead of coming straight up and over I've got a little curve here but it flattens out pretty quick in the yaw that's so that when I'm looking at my instruments I'm not jumping a lot also note that if this first point here is at zero that means that when you are at the center it's not moving at all I repeat if you leave this first point at zero you're not moving at all so you really have to move out the, the first degree the second degree to get any kind of movement that's why you see here when I use when I go move in the yaw direction I'm not getting a, a real stop in the center it slows down just a bit but not very much not like before now uh, pitch in this direction here as you can see I've got it straight up to seven so that I can get a real fluid movement wherever I look that's where it's going and it's exaggerating my movement seven times so seven times where I'm looking up it's going all the way and the reason I do this is because um, Battle of Stalingrad like uh, like Ape of the Year said it, it's kinda difficult to look up so you really need something that's gonna that's gonna let you look up and out of your plane right and then let's take a look at roll roll it is a little less important because um, that's this this movement where you're where you're turning your head which I don't really do I don't I don't find myself doing that a lot uh, what I think is a little more important is your X so that you can actually move your head side to side it's not a rotational this way back and forth it's actually moving your head side to side so if you have your canopy open or you need to see around something that's blocking your view you can do that so let me show you a bit of the the differences when I go to an actual game alright so I'm already connected to this server and I'm gonna pick a position that's out here in the corner aimed in on the map so I don't fly off uh, BF 109 G2 and the first thing I'll do is I'll zoom out a little bit so you guys can see the cockpit and get a feel for what's going on so this default setting as I move around you see that once I get back to center it kinda stops I'm turning my head regular intervals here the same speed but it kinda gets pulled back to the center kinda like I have springs attached to my head making my face go forward all the time I didn't like that very much I wanted it to be more fluid closer to that one-to-one -one that I mentioned before but uh, still exaggerated so that I could uh, turn around and see what's behind me without breaking my neck so let me change it over to Battle of Stalingrad so you guys can see what the difference is in the cockpit And here you see I, I'm, I'm moving my head at the same rate, but I'm not getting caught back in the center. I can look around, and it's a lot smoother. It's a, it's a better feel for the aircraft. You can even move here in the X direction and get around uh, some, of the, some of the things blocking you in the canopy. Uh, I'll also show you with the canopy open the kind of view that you get when you're looking around and it's quite a bit open and you have a lot of control just by moving your head a little bit because it's not too exaggerated, it's not too steep uh, it's all kept around that 7 or 9 degrees per degree that you're moving had I, had I gone up to 15 or 16 or 20 this would be very difficult to, uh, to zoom in for example and, and follow a plane and look around and see if I see anything on the ground. Quite a bit smoother movement here. Also, if you want to look around your canopy here in the front, you can do that in the X direction. You can move in the Y and in the Z, but I find that uh, less important. The Z would be here moving forward for your, for your crosshair, but the setting is pretty good. Uh, so yeah, 
you guys uh, find this helpful make sure that you go over to your advanced settings and set your settings not to how I have them but to however it works for you and be sure to subscribe if you like this video and click the like button thanks